Hey guys, Hot Rod Reverend here. Before we get into the video real quick, I want to tell you about the website, hotrodreverend.com. Visit the website, you'll find out why I have the name Hot Rod Reverend. I am a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want you to visit that page and see what the gospel is all about. Number two, visit hotrodreverend.com shop. One of the greatest deals I've got going is this. I've got a digital download for only 10 bucks that includes all of the pages, almost a thousand of the 1949 to 59 Ford parts catalogs, illustrations, all the rest of it in these catalogs. In addition to those two catalogs, I've also got a late 50s Ford engine shop manual that covers a little bit more than the Y block. It covers six cylinder as well. And then I've got owner's manuals. There's a lot in that download. Visit that today. Thank you for supporting the channel. Hey guys, Hot Rod Reverend here, back at it again today, and we're going to talk about the Holly 4000, also known as the Teapot, Towering Inferno. It gets a lot of nicknames. If you're into 50s Fords, most probably by now you've heard about this carburetor. I dare say in the 50s, probably Ford's most controversial carburetor. Uh, even today on social media, everybody flames out over this thing. Everybody gets all upset about it. We're going to talk about the Holly 4000 and modifying your vacuum signal so that you can use a distributor that also has vacuum and centrifugal advance. Nineteen fifty four, fifty five and fifty six Ford's four barrel carburetor was the Holly 4000 or a variant of it. What that meant was you basically weigh the, the, they kind of resemble a teapot, of course, but you've got the fuel bowl on top. You've got secondary tubes. This is a 55 model, by the way, that comes out of the top of the lid of the fuel bowl. Um, that, that's how we feed down here into our secondaries. Kind of prone to leak if your O-rings aren't set very well, your washers aren't staked and all of that. It's probably one of the most misunderstood carburetors that Ford ever had. Maybe some others, I don't know. But uh, these things were especially matched to your distributor. So 54, 5, and 6, the distributors were all Lodomatic. That's what the, that was the name. What that basically meant was is that the vacuum signal was especially tuned to the distributor so that there was a perfect match between the carburetor and your distributor. You had no centrifugal advance, no mechanical advance in 4, 5, and 6 from the factory for these carburetors, it's very important to remember. So what happens, and here's the why, if you upgrade and you wanna go ahead and use a, a better distributor that has mechanical advance, the vacuum signal arisen from this carburetor is gonna be extremely strong because it's really feeding off the venturis. It's not ported vacuum like a lot of our modern carburetors are. And it's also really hooked to your secondaries. This whole vacuum signal and the way this thing works, this is a different animal. So let's take you through how to, how to modify this so that it has a, has a ported vacuum signal to your modern distributor. What I've done just to prep here, I have disassembled two 1956 models. Now that's a little bit different than 55 and 54. The, the choke uh, was actually a, a part of your intake manifold. It was detached there. That's how it got its heat. 56, kind of a one-year animal with this, is that uh, you basically had the, 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 the choke mount on the, on the side of your carb here. These were not awful carburetors. These things get a bad rap. <laughs> 55, 56, 1957, when Ford had two of these set up on what was called an e, uh, e intake manifold, the dual fours. 56 and 57, Ford really ran away with a lot of, a lot of records and uh, race wins. It, it, it wasn't just NASCAR, the, the drag strips, uh, Pikes Peak, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, these are not that bad of a carburetor. So if we're gonna get this one together, let's walk you through it. Now my friend Ted Eaton at, in Texas has a great article on his website about how to go about doing this. We're gonna go ahead and take some video footage of just making this upgrade. It's not that difficult to do. Let's take a look at the tools and the equipment that we're going to need to get it done. Let me lay this out for you. You're going to need, first of all, what well, probably should talk about power valves. This is what you'd say would be the original power valve. This is out of the kit uh, 
from Daytona, but what we're going to need to do is plug uh, that port there where the power valve is at. So you need to get a plug there. You really want to make sure your vacuum, everything's sealed off. These things are very vacuum sensitive, as most carburetors are. You'll need a plug for your original vacuum line port. That's very important. Okay, I think that's an eighth inch uh, NPT there. Uh, do be careful about how these seal up. You can see right here, this one's kind of loosey-goosey. And you want something, this is the original, or I guess original style. This is from the carb kit. But these seal up so much better and they're so much tighter. Uh, I really suggest you use that. Or maybe even an O-ring. You get an O-ring that fits over there pretty good. This is from the carburetor. I'll, I'll show you the difference this makes here in just a minute. But you're going to be working with this. You'll need some quarter inch tubing. Uh, this is to pull one of the uh, plugs out of one of the ports. We'll talk about that in a second. Of course, I use JB Well a little bit just to seal uh, some of the around the quarter inch tube and of course a drill and a drill bit. So let's get to it. It might be best to look at the carburetor first just to show you what we're talking about. Obviously, I've got everything 100% disassembled. Uh, anything that really screws into this, bolts into this, whatever it might be the exception of course i've i've left the butterflies here but i've removed check balls washers uh man anything and everything even underneath here we'll talk about ports here in just a minute but this is where this long stem goes right down in there we'll talk about that in a second but um Everything's been disassembled here. I suggest you do this when you're cleaning the carburetor or maybe when you're putting a kit in it. I think that's the best time to do it, but uh, shavings, all kinds of stuff and different things. So what we'll do first is uh, just kind of explain the way this system works. You know why these plugs are here. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, manufacturers and what happens with carburetors. Of course, it's a casting and then you have to uh, drill uh, passageways inside of the carburetor, throttle body, and everything else. Well, once your drill bit gets in there from at your manufacturing plant, your machine, you, you've got to seal off the port or access that you used. That's why a lot of these lead plugs or these soft plugs exist. And what we're going to do is get access to a vacuum passageway. Now, you can tell right here, uh, this is where the original distributor line would go for vacuum advance. There's a port that goes all the way through there. Okay, so we're going to do this one on the left. Then you can also tell that that's where our uh, stem here uh, goes up through that, that port. Okay, so let's go ahead and drill this out. Try to make sure we have enough room here. You can see what's going on. By the way, this is from my daughter when she was only six or seven years old. So I say, I save it on my workbench. Nothing like having kids. Not quite sure how you break a tap with something so soft and metal, but boy, that's a craftsman tap. Oh, well. All right, uh, we're digging into it. I had a couple problems here. My uh, tap broke off so uh, it's just about out of there all right and there we go um, boy usually it's not this difficult I've done this a number of times but anyway uh, you can see where I had a drill bit break off um, but that's our hole so let's let's blow this out real quick uh, with some air and try to get all the chips and everything out of there and then I'll show you what I mean with that stem. Okay, if you look down here, you can probably see, I'm trying to get this thing to focus. Right in there, you can see the light's kind of shining through. And that's the ported vacuum that we want. So you just want to make sure that hole's clear. We're going to put a quarter inch tube just to seal off everything here. But let me put in that stem, show you what happens if you don't cut the stem. Okay, if you put the stem 
back in your base. Of course, again, this is where uh, from the factory a hole was drilled up in here for your original vacuum signal. But you can see where the stem is at right here uh, coming up through. So you're gonna make sure that that's cut off enough to where when you put your tube in there, it's not gonna have any interference. All right, we got uh, about an inch and a half or so of uh, copper quarter inch OD tube. And then I've also cut my stem down as well. So I do like using some uh, JB weld or some epoxy sometimes with these things, just to make sure that whole tube seals inside this port. You can tell right here, I was drilling out a little bit and got in that wall, but um, you definitely want this sealed off as as good as it can be, or I guess I should say 110%. Now you don't want a lot of JB weld, just a little bit right here, and you don't want to put the JB weld or the epoxy inside uh, this port because you're you don't want to be in danger of sealing off that hole. So just kind of get this ready here a little bit. just kind of drive right in kind of with a rubber mallet. You can tell I'm going to have to wipe some of that JB weld off there, but you're pretty good. Once again, right here, we're just using a light and just checking that that hole is where. All right, we're going to put our plug back in down here just for safety's sake technically if it's sealed it's nearly not a problem but we'll just put that back in there then we'll also put a plug here all right real quick i forgot to say and i don't i can't find it but my um one eighth of an inch uh npt you'll need to tap for that so what i got i just got a little just made a plug from the original distributor vacuum line fitting. And this little orifice right here doesn't necessarily need to go back in uh, this location, but just in case, you know, you sell the carburetor, somebody gets it, they want to do whatever and go back with the original setup, they can. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in there. Um, but for all practical purposes, this is just all sealed off. There's really nothing going on right here because you've you've changed it all to this port that you've put on the um, right on here on the end next we're going to put on our plug you can tell I went with the o-ring here um, you can do what you'd like if you want to use a gasket or whatever but uh, this is a this is a one inch wrench that will need to be on here to tighten this little doohickey up. But you obviously want to make sure that this is sealed and um, no vacuum leak. All right, all that's left to do is really just put our plug in and um, we'll be sealed up, ready to go. I more or less, this is pretty much the adjustments that you need to make or modifications for a distributor that has mechanical and vacuum advance. You're going to put a plug for your power valve. Basically, you're going to seal off the original port or ports, I should say, maybe passageways. You're going to create a new one. You're going to pull the plug out of here on the one on the left. Make sure you don't do this middle one. You can tell that these two right here for your idle mixture screw. So don't mess that up. But um, quarter inch right here. And of course, you'll probably need something, a reducer to go down to 3 16 Most, most, not all, but, but most of the OEM or aftermarket distributors for Y blocks that have vacuum and mechanical advance are going to be 3 16 You'll need a little bit of a reducer. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today. Uh, real quick one on modifying the Holly 4000 carburetor. 
I do have some other things in the works. The uh, air cleaner that matches this carburetor. We're going from oil bath to uh, paper element. Some guys have some different riggings on how they do that. And I've never really been satisfied with what I've seen, but I'm very happy with what I've found. We're almost done with that series of uh, video clips and we'll get that out to you. And we're also going to be building up this Holley 4000 to run on this 1955 Ford Fairlane Club sedan that I've owned since I was 16. A lot of urban legends and myths about the Holley 4000. Now, obviously, with any kind of carburetor, you got to be careful, know what you're doing. There are some intricate details with the Holley 4000 that really 57 plus anything from uh, the manufacturer or anything from aftermarket company, it's going to be a little bit different. You got a fuel bowl sits on top. And the thing doesn't look an oddball. It's a call it a teapot and everything else. But um, we're planning on running this. I'm going to put a kit in this with, from, from Daytona Parts and get it back on the road. I've got that air cleaner I'm working on. I want to get that to you as well. So hopefully we'll have some more content here coming up from week to week as we roll into the summer.